Hello friends, welcome back to the ethical hacking course. In the last few videos, we learned how to crack web encryption within a minute, even if the target network was not busy. But now we are going to dive into something more secure, cracking WP and WPA2. Before we get into the details of cracking, it is important to understand that WPA and WPA2 are very similar. The main key difference the type of encryption they use to ensure message integrity. WPA used TKIP while WPA2 used TCMP encryption. But don't worry, the methods I will show you will work on both. Security improvements in WPA and WPA2. Now, WPA and WPA2 were designed to fix the weakness of WEP. So, they are much more secure, and as you might guess, and cracking them is more challenging. But before we talk about how to crack this encryption directly. There is a one feature I want to mention that if misconfigured, make your job easier. This feature is called WPS. WPS stands for Wi Fi Protected Setup. Was designed to make it easier for devices like Winters to connect to a network without needing to enter the password. You might have seen a WPS button on wireless printers and router. Press the WPS button on the router, then on the device and they will connect automatically. No password needed. WPS use an 8 digit pin for authentication and here is where the vulnerabilities comes in. An 8 digit pin gives us to a relatively small number of possible combinations to try. If we can guess the pin, we can recover the actual WPA or WPA key without having to crack the encryption. So, in this case, we are not attacking WPA or WPA2 directly. We are exploiting our weakness in WPA. For this method to work, a few things must be in place. WPS has to be enabled on the network. It should be set to the normal pin authentication and not push button. If the router uses push button authentication, our attack won't work because the router will ignore any pin attempt unless the button is pressed. Now, most modern routers either have PBC enabled by default or WPS is completely disabled for security reasons. So this method might not always work, but because WP and WPA2 are so secure, it's always worth checking if WPS is unable and misconfigured. If it is, you can try the method I will show you in the next video. And if that fails, we will explore other techniques for cracking WP and WPA2 encryption. That's it for now. In the next video, we will dive deeper into exploiting a WPS and start testing network for vulnerabilities. Make sure to stick around because it's going to get really interesting. Hello everyone. Welcome back to the ethical hacking course. Now that we understand what is WPS and how it can help to recover the password for WPA and WPA2. Let's dive into how we can actually perform this attack. I have my Kali machine ready and I have already enabled monitor mode on my wireless adapter. Scanning for networks with WPS enabled, usually we use Airdump NG to see all nearby networks. But this time, we only went to find networks with WPS enabled. For that, we will use a tool called WAS. So I will run the command WAS interface and our wireless adapter interface. And where LAN 0 is my wireless adapter in monitor mode and hit enter and you will see all the networks that have WPS enabled. Here you can see my target network called GN access 2.4 GHz. Understanding the output, it's giving us some important details. The vendor of the access point, whether WPS is locked, it says no here, meaning we can attempt to guess the pin, the WPS version which is version 2 in this case, the signal stand, channel and BSSID. If you have forgotten what these terms, if you have forgotten what these terms means, refer back to the earlier lecture on air dump NG. But remember, we don't need to worry whether it's WPA or WPA2 because we are, because we are targeting the WPS feature. Since our target network used WPS, there is a good chance this attack will work unless it's used it uses push button configuration. In that case, the router would reject all pin attempts unless the button is pressed. The only way to know is to try the attack. I will copy the MAC address of the target network 
and now we need to associate with the network using a fake authentication attack running the fake authentication attack i am going to use airplay ng for this and here is the command airplay ng fake auth a target id hyphen h hyphen h for our wireless adapter mac address copy the first 12 digits and paste here remove hyphen and replace the column And our wireless adapter network interface. This command tells Airplay NG to perform a fake authentication attack every 30 seconds to keep the connection alive. Now we are ready to associate with the target network, but I won't execute it just yet. Now, first I clear the screen. Running river to boot for the pin. Here is the command river PSS ID. Paste target BSS ID channel and interface and video associate. Let me break it down. Viewer is the program. VSS ID provides the target network's MAC address. Channel specify the network channel. Interface specify the wireless adapter and monitor mode. VV source detail information. No associate tells reward not to associate since we are handling that manually. Now I will hit enter to start reward. And go back to top terminal. And run the fake authentication attack. As you can see, Reward has successfully recovered the WPA key, which is 12345678900. I can now connect to the network using the password and decrypt any packets being sent. Keep in mind, this method won't work on all routers, but when it does, it is quick way to gain access. In the previous videos. We explored a method to hack Wi-Fi network using WPS. But what if WPS is disabled or configured to use the push button method? Well, in that case, we will have to switch gear and focus on cracking the actual WPA and WPA2 encryption. When WPA and WPA2 encryptions were developed, they were designed to fix the flows found in in web encryption, and they did a pretty good job. Unlike web in WPA and WPA2. The encryption key are unique, temporary, and much longer. This means the packets sent over the air don't contain any useful information for us, no matter how many we capture. But there is one set of packets that holds the key to this puzzle, the handshake packets. These four packets are exchanged between a client and the router when the client connects to the network. In this lecture, I will show you how to capture these handshake packets and in the next one, we will see how to use them to crack the WPA or WPA2 keys. First, as always, we will run Aerodrome Benji to scan all the networks around us. I have done that, and here is my target. It's using WPA2 encryption. We'll copy the MAC address because we will need it soon. Next, Let's run Aerodrome Benji on our target network and store the data in a file, just like we did with web. Here is the command Aerodrome ng BSS ID paste target network BSS ID set channel our target is on six number channel and save it to one file right WPA and check and our wireless adapter interface zero replace with the MAC address of your target with the channel number 
This command will monitor our target and store all the data in a file named WPA handshake. Now we just have to wait for a handshake to be captured. This happens when a client connects to the network. So we will wait until a new client connects. But waiting can be boring, right? So let's speed things up. We can use the authentication attack to force the client to disconnect and reconnect. We have done this before. So here is a quick refresher. We will use the error dump ng tool to send the authentication packets. L play ng the auth for iPhone A paste target BSS ID iPhone C copy client MAC address and paste here and LAN 0. Here the auth for sends for the authentication packets. Just enough to disconnect the client for a moment. Replace with the router's MAC address and with the MAC address of the client. You went to target. Once we run the command, when the client reconnects, we should capture the handshake. We got the handshake. Now we can stop Adam ng by, by pressing Ctrl C. This captured handshake is stored in our file WPA handshake. In the next lecture, I will show you how we can use this handshake to get the key for the network. Until then, from the previous lectures, we learned that when it comes to WPA and WPA2, the only packets that contain some information that can help us with cracking the keys are the handshake packets. In the last lecture, we learned how to crack, how to capture the handshake and store it in the file. Now the handshake does not contain any information that can help us to recover or recalculate the WPA. The information in it can only be used to check whether a password is valid or not. Therefore, what we are going to do is create a word list, which is basically a big text file that contains a large number of passwords. Then go through this file, go through the password one by one and use them with a handshake in order to check whether this password is valid or not. You can actually download ready word list from the internet. But in this lecture, I want to teach you how to create your own word list. In the next lecture, I am going to explain how the word list and the handshake are used in order to record the password. And we will see how to do that in practice. So in this lecture, we are going to learn how you create your own word list using a tool called Crunch. This is a really handy skill to have under your belt. If you want to be a penetration tester, you are going to face a lot of scenario where a word list attack can become a very handy. Using the tool is very simple. All you have to do is just put the name of the tool and then you specify the minimum number of characters for the password to be generated. Then we are going to specify the maximum number of characters for the password. Then you specify the characters that you want to generate passwords from. For example, you can put all lowercase characters, all uppercase characters, you can put numbers, digits, or you can specify smaller number to make the word list smaller. You can also use the option T, which is optional, to give a pattern. Let's say that you are looking at the person while they are typing their password, and you have seen that password will start from an A. So you can tell Crunch that the password will start with an A, and then give me all possible combination of password that start with an A. After that, we use the hyphen O option to specify the file name where the password are going to be stored. We have a small example here that will generate a list of passwords that start from 6 characters to 10 characters and contain this character right here. So it's going to create a combination of 1, 2, 3, ABC and dollar sign. It's going to store it in a file called WordList. These passwords will always start with A and end with B. The tool actually has a lot of options for other than what we have seen so far. If you just type in man crunch, you will see all the options that you have can set and you will see all detailed description about all these options. It's actually really good. You can go ahead and spend some time for getting familiar with it. One of the really cool options that I want to highlight is the hyphen P option. 
The P option tells cons to generate password that don't have repeating characters. When you specify all lowercase characters as A, B, C, D, it will start by generating password made of turn time of A and then A O time of B. When you do this, cons will ignore this type of password and only create password that don't have to repeating character. That will reduce the size of the world list from the number of character raised to the power of length down to factorial of number of character. If you scroll down, you will actually see more example of commands, types of world list of commands and types of world list that, that will be created. You can have a look at this and get yourself familiar with them. Once you are done looking at men, you can just press Q and you will be out of it. We are gonna run our command here using crunch. I went to generate password with a minimum of 6 characters and a maximum of 8 characters containing combination of ABC and digit 1, 2. Now in here, you can actually keep listing things. You can list characters, uppercase characters or even symbols if you wanted to. Once you have done listing the character, we are gonna specify the file to save it to call test.txt. The command is very simple. Crunch 6 and 8 abc and hyphen o for test.txt. It's crunch followed by a minimum length of password, maximum length of password, followed by character we want to use for generating password from. And then iPhone O for specifying where those passwords are gonna be stored. As you can see, now it's telling us that it password is generated of 4 megabytes. Now I can open the file by doing cat test.txt. As you can see now, we can see all the generated password containing all possible combination of ABC12. I also went to show you an example using the hyphen T option. I am going to set this for only 6 character using hyphen T which is for a pattern option. I went it for my password always start with an A while filling all possible combination between A and B. As you can see now because I have narrowed down possibilities for password starting with A and ending with B while allowing any combination in between using ABC12 results in only 625 possible passwords. Again if I do get the text file you will see all those generated password right here. This tool is really useful and can be applied useful and can be applied in many scenarios. I highly recommend spending some time with it as well as looking at existing word list available on the internet. In the previous lectures, we learned that to crack WP and WP2, we need two main components. First, we need to capture the handshake. Second, we need a word list containing a set of possible passwords that we will try one by one, hoping one of them matches the target network's password. Right now, I have both of these components ready. So, we are set to go and crack the password. How Aircrack NG work to do this? We will use Aircrack NG. This tool will unpack the handshake file and extract the useful information. One crucial piece of this information is MIC. MIC stand for Message Integrity Code. This MIC is used by this MIC is used by the access point to verify if a password is correct or not. Aircrack NG separate this MIC and set it aside. Then it combines all the other information from the handshake with the first password in the word list to generate a new MIC. It then compares this newly generated MIC with the one extracted from the handshake. If the two MICs match, then we have found the correct password for the network. If they don't match, the tool will move on the next password in the word list. It keeps repeating this process, taking each password from the word list, combining it with the handshake data, generating a new MIC and comparing it with the original MIC. If one of the passwords generate the right MIC, that's the network password. None of them match, then we won't able to get the password using this word list. Importance of good word list. This is why the success of this attack largely depend on the quality and size of your word list. For demonstration, I have a word list test.txt. I have manually added my target password to the end of this list so that when I run it against the handshake, I will find the correct password since it was not included by default. 
wpa handshake 01.cap file in my home directory you will see both the word list and the handshake file running aircrack ng now we are ready to run aircrack ng we will type the command aircrack ng followed by our capture file name wpa handshake 01.cap since this is a wpa2 network we have to specify the word list using the hyphen w option like this like this aircraft wpa and shape 01 dot cap file hyphen w shape dot txt aircraft ng is now going to the word list testing each word one by one as shown in the diagram it calculates an mic based on the information from the handset and the current password from the word list if the mic is correct it will tell us the deaths we have found the factor affecting speed of the speed of this process depend on your processor and the size of your word list larger word list will take longer to process there are also online service available where you can upload your handshake file and they use huge word list along with supercomputers to find the password for success as you can see we have successfully found the key it matches the same key we obtain when exploiting the WPS features. Now we can connect to the network and perform all cool stuff. I will be teaching you in the post connection attack. Alternatively, methods and tips currently, this word list attack is only practical way to crack WP and WP2 keys. However, there are methods to speed up the process using GPUs, which are the faster than CPUs. If you have one available, you can also use rainbow tables or pipe your word list directly from crunch into aircrack ng avoiding the need to store the word list on your computer there are even methods to pause your cracking process and resume later without closing your process but the main idea remains the same cracking wpa and wpa2 require a word list attack that's all for today's lecture i hope you found this information useful stay safe and i will see you in the next video